Hi, my name is Rebecca Kather, and my project is Zinc as an Ergogenic Aid. So what is an ergogenic aid? Our book's definition states it as anything that enhances a person's ability to perform work, or in the case of athletics, to perform better in sports. Ergogenic aids are classified into a few broad categories. This includes nutritional, physiological, psychological, biomechanical, and pharmacological. We are going to focus on nutritional since that's where zinc is classified as an ergogenic aid. Um, this includes areas such as carbohydrate loading, creatine phosphate, amino acid supplementation, vitamin supplementation, glucose polymer drinks, and sports gels. Physiological ergogenic aids include physical training, blood doping through transfusions, and warming up. Psychological uh, ergogenic aids include visualization, sports psychology sessions, hypnosis, pep talks, and relaxation techniques. When we talk about biomechanical ergogenic aids, we usually think of equipment. This includes like weight belts, knee wraps, oversized equipment such as tennis rackets and golf clubs, clap skates, body suits, and corked bats. Finally, there's pharmacological. This includes areas such as hormones, amphetamines, caffeine, beta blockers, and ephedrine. This, it's important to note that this is not a full list. So what is zinc? Zinc is classified as a trace mineral. These minerals are required by the body in quantities less than 100 milligrams per day. Other trace minerals include iron, chromium, fluoride, copper, manganese, iodine, molybdenum, and selenium. So what are the dietary sources that we can find zinc? They're found in dark meats, fish, oysters, eggs, whole grains, wheat germ, legumes, and dairy products, just to name a few. So how is zinc transported and where does it go? Uh, upon ingestion, zinc binds to albumin. From there, albumin takes it to mainly muscle and bone. Uh, the remainder of it goes to liver, kidneys, skin, and many other organs. So now we know what zinc is, where to find it, and where it goes. We want to know exactly what it does. So why is it important? Why are we looking at zinc? We're looking at it because it contributes to over 200 enzymatic systems. It helps in wound healing, immune function, and the synthesis of RNA and DNA, in other words, gene expression, growth and maintenance of tissues, it helps produce hormones and synthesize proteins, and it aids in our reproductive systems. So by looking at all this, we can see that it actually does quite a bit in our bodies. Currently, the RDA and AI for zinc for men is 11 milligrams per day, and for women, it's 8 milligrams a day. There is an upper limit of 40 milligrams a day. If you look at the current recommendations, you can see this is quite a bit higher. But this level was set from observations of copper, copper reduction status. As zinc goes up, copper goes down. And in our bodies, we need to keep this, these levels more even. They're both equally important, but we have to maintain homeostasis. There are some problems that can arise with zinc intake. You can either be zinc deficient or zinc toxic. Uh, both of these conditions are rare. And in regards to zinc deficiency, it shouldn't, it's not an issue if you consume an adequate total calories. Um, however, there are countries with a lot of malnourished individuals. These individuals are at risk for zinc deficiency because they cannot gain the nutritional um, requirements needed to maintain their zinc levels. Um, other area, people that are at risk tend to be athletes and vegetarians. For athletes, we work our bodies very hard and zinc is often used in repair and recovery of tissues and other factors. There's some blood parameters that I will talk about later. 
However, uh, with vegetarians, they consume very little, if at all, any meat. And if you look at the dietary sources, meat is a big in zinc uh, dietary source. So therefore, they can be zinc deficient and have to be careful. Uh, problems that can happen if you are zinc deficient, you can have impaired immune function, loss of appetite, diarrhea, dermatitis, and low testosterone for men. On the other hand, you can be zinc toxic. This is also still rare, as I mentioned before. Um, our body is very efficient, and we can excrete excess zinc very well. Um, however, uh, if you have high zinc, it impairs iron and copper absorption. There's a mineral-mineral interaction here. Uh, you have to, as I uh, mentioned earlier, you have to maintain homeostasis in your body. All of these trace minerals are very important for regular physiological and biochemical functions. Um, if you are zinc toxic, the problems that you can experience are anemia, nausea, vomiting, increases in LDLs, which if you've had any uh, physio physiology classes, you'll know that that's bad cholesterol and this can increase risk of heart disease in the future. This was a picture I came across on the internet when uh, studying zinc, and it does a very good job at explaining how too much or too little zinc can affect our bodies. For instance, if you have too much zinc, um, your brain can be affected and have lethargy. However, if you have too little, you can have decreased nerve conduction and thus um, impaired cognitive functions. What I found interesting is too much zinc can actually elevate your risk of prostate cancer for men. Um, and, but too little can actually create uh, infertility. This is very interesting in my opinion. So it can have severe consequences if we're not careful with it. In the past, there has been some interesting studies done on zinc supplementation. The first uh, scientific research article that I would like to discuss is titled Effects of Zinc Supplementation on Hematological Parameters of High-Performance Athletes. This was done by Yaya Pole in 2011. The purpose of his experiment was to determine if zinc supplementation had beneficial effects on blood and trained athletes. He especially wanted to examine how uh, the supplementation uh, affected kickboxers versus people that aren't active or sedentary. Um, so for this experiment, he divided his group into three different groups. He did an exercise only, a supplementary uh, and sedentary group, and an exercise and supplemented group. Uh, for the exercise, they performed uh, three times a week, and it consisted of a warm-up period, uh, followed by kickboxing exercises designed for strength, speed, endurance, and coordination. They did this until they reached volitional exhaustion, which was around 150 to 175 beats per minute for their heart, heart rate. Um, they did this experiment for a duration of eight, wait, eight weeks. His findings were very interesting because he found there were a lot of increases in hematological parameters after supplementation and exercise. Therefore, his, the major findings of his research concluded that zinc supplementation had beneficial effects on hematological parameters for exercise. What better... Uh, way to improve exercise performance than improving your blood counts. After looking at the first research article, I decided to look for a second research article regarding zinc supplementation and blood parameters or immune function health. Therefore, the title of my second uh, scientific research article is Effect of Exercise and Zinc Supplementation on Cytokine Release in Young Wrestlers by Karen and others in 2011. Um, 
The purpose of their study was to determine if zinc supplementation in young male wrestlers had an effect on cytokine release activity. For this experiment, they used 2.5 mg per kilogram per day of zinc picolinate on uh, young wrestlers between the age of 12 to, 20, 12 to 14 years old. Um, these participants were split into three groups. Much like the last study, they split them into exercise only, zinc supplemented and sedentary individuals, and zinc supplemented with exercise. Uh, the exercise that they performed was three times a week for 90 to 120 minutes of kickboxing exercises until their heart reached 120 to 140 beats per minute. I found it interesting that they decided to do kickboxing exercises and not strictly wrestling, but it was interesting all the same. Um, this was also done over a duration of eight weeks. In the end, they found that exercise alone increased erythrocyte count. However, zinc supplementation, both with and without exercise, also increased leukocyte, erythrocyte, platelet, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, and lymphocyte counts. Um, so the results showed not only um, improvements in blood parameters, but also improvements in the immune system. So therefore, they concluded that zinc supplementation positively could influence um, performance, sport athletic performance, by improving blood parameters. Overall, I found it very interesting. There's not many studies on zinc, and the ones that have been done are starting to focus on blood parameters in athletes, which is understandable. The final scientific research article that I will discuss is called Evidence of Zinc Deficiency in Competitive Swimmers. This was done uh, by D. Carvalho and others in 2012. The purpose of their experiment was to investigate zinc status in elite competitive swimmers at various training periods. Not much had been done on swimmers and not much had been done to determine if zinc changed between different training periods. Uh, so their methods uh, included uh, eight elite swimmers between the age of 18 to 25 years old. So this age group was slightly older, and it was done for 14 weeks, so slightly longer. Um, the experiment included 10 weeks of basic and specific preparatory period, followed by a polishing period for four weeks. Uh, during the experiment, zinc status was thoroughly investigated at each stage. What they found was uh, that zinc levels didn't differ between training periods, which was interesting because you think it would deplete during harder training periods, but it didn't. However, they did find low levels in the blood, saliva, urine, and urine, despite the dietary intake of zinc being above or average of the recommended uh, dietary intake levels. So overall, these researchers concluded that swimmers had a zinc deficiency, even though current guidelines state their dietary zinc intake to be adequate. Therefore, it's my conclusion that, um, that the dietary intake is not adequate enough for athletes yet. It's, it's more uh, geared towards the normal population. So... Uh, Increasing zinc intake may be beneficial for athletes still. If we look at the information that we get from the internet, we also find some interesting sites for zinc. One particular site is from Mayo Clinic. This is a medical site and it lists the benefits as well as an overview of what zinc is and a background into it as well as uh, many other things that I will discuss. So some of the benefits they list that zinc contributes to is it could uh, help the common cold in prevention and as a remedy, but it's still under investigation, so it's not solid yet. They also claim it could be effective in treatment of diarrhea, stomach ulcers, and zinc deficiency. And 
as well as some evidence supports its use for acne, ADHD, herpes simplex virus, immune function, and sickle cell anemia. There is mixed findings according to Wilson's disease, which is a copper intake kind of disease. It's genetic, but some suggest it's uh, helpful, while others suggest that it plays no effect in it. Um, the site also provides some background information. They state that our body contains about 2 to 3 grams of zinc, which is mostly found in the skeletal muscles and bones. A severe deficiency can be found in developing countries. Like I said, a lot of them are malnourished, so they aren't able to get the proper nutrition needed. Therefore, their zinc levels decline. Um, it's rare in developed countries, and, but according to this site, it's more prevalent in elderly and pregnant people. And if you think back to my earlier slides, you, you will remember that I also said it can be an issue for athletes and vegetarians as well. Um, this site also provides a scaling of how effective zinc is for certain ailments and they use it they grade it according A to F to it has a ton of evidence on for its treatment of this ailment would be an A versus it has very little to no evidence would be an F. Think of a school grading scale. It also provides uh, dosing information for children and adults as well as safety information that includes allergies, side effects, and warnings, and its interactions with other medications and supplements. If you want to check out the site, I have included the link above. Another very interesting site for zinc that I found is called RX List. This site treats zinc as if it was a medication or a prescription. It lists its benefits as how effective they are, as well as some other things that I will discuss. Therefore, it states that zinc is super effective in treating zinc deficiency. I think this is kind of a no-brainer, but just in case you didn't know, um, it also states that it's likely effective in diarrhea and Wilson's disease. Remember that in my clinic, it said Wilson's disease did uh, was had mixed results, but in this set, in this site, it says it's likely effective, meaning there's some evidence that points to its effectiveness. It also is possibly effective for the common cold, weight gain, depression for eating disorders, hypogesia, which is abnormal taste, acne, osteoporosis, acrodermatitis, enteropathica, leprosy, herpes simplex virus, AMD, stomach ulcers, sickle cell anemia, and much more. Um, you can read through the full list if you want on the page, it, but it also lists it, that it may be possibly ineffective for skin conditions, arthritis, cataracts, malaria, inflammatory bowel disease, tinnitus, which is ringing of the ears, AIDS, diarrhea wasting syndrome, flu prevention, birth waste and gest gestation times, for uh, HIV-infected pregnant women, and prostate cancer. Um, this site also uh, provides info on uh, the ailments that don't have enough evidence to even be listed in their list, and how zinc works, as well as its safety and interactions with other medications, supplements, and dosing. Overall, uh, we can already see that that some sites are contradicting each other. Some say it's effective in common coal, super effective. Others say it's possibly, meaning there's not a lot of evidence on it. Some say it's effective in um, arthritis, while others deny that. So it all depends on what research they are looking at, as a lot of the research is conflicting still. For the third site, I looked at Medical News Today. This site talks about zinc like an article in a news story. It talks about its benefits, its sources, and its precautions. The normal and athletic population today are becoming increasingly interested in the uses for zinc. 
So the benefits that this site lists is immune function, treating diarrhea, learning and memory, treatment of common cold, wound healing, AMD, acne, ADHD, osteoporosis, and pneumonia treatment and prevention. Um, we, as noted before, we see that some of these are conflicting with the other studies or the other sites, such as acne, one site listed as not effective at all, while another site listed as being effective. Um, so again, it, de it depends on what uh, articles and research articles they studied. Um, the sources they include are what we would think of. It's basically fish and meat is the big sources. What I found interesting is dark chocolate is included in it. I never thought dark chocolate would contain zinc as well, but I found that very interesting. Um, their precautions, they also list zinc deficiency and zinc toxicity. If you look at these two, you notice that um, diarrhea is actually in both of them. So it would sometimes be difficult to diagnose which one they have, I guess, without doing a full test. In fact, I have read some articles that I didn't include that said uh, zinc deficiency is often misdiagnosed, although I don't know if it's misdiagnosed for toxicity, but it's usually misdiagnosed as another ailment, I guess. Um, so this site I found very interesting, and it was easier to read for the normal population as well. Again, I am including all of the links into all of these PowerPoints if you want to check them out yourself. If you look back at all the benefits that zinc provides, you'll notice a common theme. Immune health is always listed within the benefits of zinc supplementation. Therefore, I found that this fourth uh, website was a very good uh, conclusion for uh, bringing everything together. This was from Natural Society, and it was treated like an article on a, on a blog that somebody wrote. But it's from a scientific standpoint. So uh, they list zinc as an immune health booster. And if you look even on YouTube or or on the internet and look for zinc, you'll see that its main benefit is immune health. Therefore, this the summary of this site says that uh, zinc plays a major role in immune function and growth. Um, it's no surprise that as we get older, our immune health declines, and therefore 40% of elderly are zinc deficient. Therefore, the elderly should uh, consider supplementation or increasing their dietary zinc intake. Um, this site also states that researchers often uh, refer to zinc as tapping the brakes on immune function, immune health. Well, I should say inflammation specifically. It prevents excess inflammation. Um, researchers would like to state as well in this article that they want individuals to start with zinc, not attack with zinc. In other words, they want to ensure that you have enough zinc in your diet rather than taking supplements to fight an ailment that you're trying to beat. Um, overall, I found it very interesting, and I thought it summarized everything great. In conclusion, zinc plays a big part in many of the physiological and biochemical functions within the human body. In regards to the athletic population, uh, young athletes in particular, it has been shown to improve blood parameters and immune system function. Therefore, if we look at all the data and evidence we obtained from both the internet and scientific articles, we can deduce that it may be beneficial as an ergogenic aid for the improvement of athletic performance. However, I do stress that precautions should be taken due to the risk of zinc toxicity. A physician should oversee zinc increases and athletes should strive to increase zinc levels through diet rather than supplements. There hasn't been a whole lot on zinc, zinc as an ergogenic aid, which surprises me. Um, 
considering how essential it is to our bodies and how much it truly does, even as a trace mineral. So, however, I feel like it, it is starting to uh, rise in popularity for the normal population as well as the athletic population. Um, so we may see more of this in the future. Overall, I found this project to be very interesting, and I learned a ton. And that concludes my presentation. The next two slides are my references. If you want, look them over or even visit some of the sites. I've included them. Thank you.